We've looked at impulse and momentum, and we've looked at momentum in one dimension, so the three different types of collisions, elastic, inelastic, and also explosions. Now what we're going to do is look at collisions in two dimensions, so 2D collisions or 2D momentum. You've seen the math in all of this before, it's just now applying it to momentum. So how do you solve two-dimensional momentum problems? First, you need to draw the diagram. Then, list given and find with subscripts for the x and the y components. You're going to solve for x and y separately, and then at the end we're going to combine. So remember what we did with vector addition and having to do a little bit of trig. One thing to watch out for. If something is moving to the left or down, that means that the component is negative. So that means negative x or y. I don't know why I put the comma there. So negative x or y component. This all comes from the diagram. So you need the diagram. The angles are going to work out exactly the same way that they did whenever we've seen them before. So if something's moving, and you'll see this in pictures, theta is always going to be relative to the x-axis. There's no phi's to worry about, so like say that would be theta 1, theta 2. You don't have to worry about a phi. Um, usually it'll be giving you the angle relative to the x-axis. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. But this is very, very similar to vector addition. Um, so if you need a refresher, either ask me or go back and watch that video for mathematical vector addition. Um, I'll do two examples, and you have those in your packet. It says 2D momentum examples, and we'll see how this works. So again, the main things you need to worry about in terms of general concepts. If the object is moving to the left or down, that means you're going to have negative if it's to the left, um, negative x, and if it's down, a negative y component. And those are things that you're going to have to physically put in. Those directions, specifically with the left part, not so much down, but specifically with the left, depend on the diagram. So let's do the two examples. Okay, so here's the first example. A spaceship is cruising past the moon at 300 meters per second relative to the moon when it ejects a lunar lander vehicle straight down at 60 meters per second relative to the moon. The mass of the spaceship, not including the lander, is 35,000 kilograms, and the mass of the lander is 12,000 kilograms. What is the velocity of the spaceship after ejecting the lander? Our diagram shows after the, if you want to call it a collision happens, this is actually an explosion because they start with the same velocity and then they have two different velocities after. So because this is an explosion, the lander starts inside the spaceship and that's A and B is after they move, I'm sorry, after it releases. So for our given information, we know that the spaceship with the lander, so VA, because this is an explosion, is moving 300 meters per second. And it's moving to the left, so that will be negative 300 meters per second. It ejects the lander vehicle straight down. So we're going to call that, let's call the spaceship 1 and the lander 2. So V2B is going to be negative because it's down 60 meters per second. And this is in the y direction. This is in the x direction. The mass of the spaceship, so m1, is 35,000 kilograms. Mass of the lander, m2, is 12,000 kilograms. And we want to find the velocity of the spaceship after it ejects the lander, so V1B. All right, first thing we want to do is split this up into the x and the y. In the x direction, it's an explosion, so m1 plus m2, VA equals m1, V1B plus m2, v2, b. It's initially moving in the x direction, so this va 
is in the x. Afterwards, the lander moves straight down. So v2, b in the x does not exist. m1 plus m2 va equals m1 v1 b. And again, this is just in the x direction. We know m1, we know m2, we know va. The only thing we don't know is v1 b x. So let's solve this. m1 plus m2 va over m1 equals v1 b. So my mass 1 is 35,000 kilograms, plus mass 2, 12,000 kilograms, times negative 300 meters per second, over 35,000 kilograms, which is going to equal my VB, V1B in the X. This comes out to negative 402.8, keeps on going, meters per second. And this is VB in the x direction. I would store that as x in your calculator. Okay, now looking in the y direction. Again, it's an explosion. So M1 plus M2 VA equals m1 v1 b plus m2 v2 b. Initially in the y direction, there is no motion because the spaceship with the lander is moving directly to the left, so there's no y motion. The lander moves down and the spaceship will have some kind of y component. So isolating for v1 b in the y, we get negative m2 v2 b over m1 equaling V1B. So this is negative 12,000 kilograms times negative 60 meters per second over 35,000 kilograms. And this equals V1B in the Y. And this comes out to, negatives will cancel, so this is an actually a positive number, 20.5 keeps on going, meters per second, equaling v one b y. I would store that as y in your calculator. And this is the stuff that's going to look familiar. Vector addition. You have the x component. So this is v one b x. You have the y component, v one b y. How do I know that the x points to the left? Because it was negative. So this was negative 402.8 meters per second. How do I know that V1BY goes up? Because it was positive. 20.5 keeps on going meters per second. V1B is the resultant. So it's going to be up and to the left at the angle theta. So V1BY squared plus V1BX squared equals V1B squared. This is all old stuff, just Pythagorean theorem. 20.5 keeps on going, meters per second squared, plus negative 402.8 keeps on going, meters per second squared equals V1B squared. Adding those together and taking the square root you get 403.3 keeps on going meters per second for V1B. Last thing we need to do is figure out the angle. It's asking for velocity. Velocity has magnitude and direction. So we have the opposite and the adjacent. Tan theta equals V1BY over V1BX. If you store those as X and Y in your calculator, it makes it really easy. So theta is equal to the inverse tan of 20.5 keeps on going meters per second over 402.8 keeps on going meters per second. 
the negative in your calculator is just going to give you a negative angle. Um, all that means is, or sorry, could give you a negative angle. All that means is that your angle is not up and to the right. So putting this in the calculator, again, if you had these as x and y, alpha y over alpha x makes it really easy. You get 2.9, keeps on going, degrees. So your velocity, v1b, is approximately equal to 400 meters per second speed plus the direction at 3 degrees north of west. And just a refresher, if this is our coordinate system, this is north of east, north of west, south of west, south of east. You always want to do the angle relative to the x-axis. I'm going to do the next example, and then we'll pl spend plenty of time in class doing practice with these. An empty 16 kilogram canoe is drifting down a river at five meters per second when a 34 kilogram child runs and jumps into the canoe at a speed of three meters per second. If the child jumps perpendicular to the direction of the canoe, what is the speed of the child after landing in the canoe? We wanna ignore any resistive forces from the water and friction. So just ignore any kind of work that would be done. We have our picture. So this tells us our directions. Let's make the child object one and the canoe object two. Doesn't matter what you make one or two. Okay, given. So mass two is 16 kilograms. V2A is negative five meters per second. Negative because it's moving down and this is in the y direction. Mass 1 is 34 kilograms. V1A is 3 meters per second. They're gonna ju he's going to jump into the canoe, and they'll be moving in the same way and at the same speed. So this is an inelastic collision. And because this is inelastic, we know that V1B equals V2B. And what are we looking for? We're looking for that VB. So because those are equal, we're looking for the speed in B. Also, I forgot to add in the given, the child is moving in the X direction, moving to the right so it's positive. So breaking apart into the X and the Y. Start, it doesn't really matter if you start with X or Y. I'm just going to start with the X. An inelastic collision means same speed after, so M1 V1A plus M2 V2A equals M1 plus M2 VB. Initially, there is no motion in the X direction for M2, so that goes away. M1 V1A over M1 plus M2 equals VB. My M1, 34 kilograms, times V1A, 3 meters per second, over 34 kilograms plus 16 kilograms equals VB. And this comes out to... 2.04 keeps on going meters per second. That's my VB in the X direction. So store that in your calculator as X. Moving over to the Y direction. Again, it's still inelastic. So M1, I don't know why I put parentheses there. Let's change this. M1 V1A plus M2 V2A equals M1 plus M2 VB. In the y direction, there's initially no motion for object 1. The child's only moving in the x. So M2 V2A over M1 plus M2 equals VB. My mass 2, this is 16 kilograms 
times my V2A, negative 5 meters per second. Again, negative because the picture shows the canoe moving down over 34 kilograms plus 16 kilograms equals VB. This comes out to negative 1.6 meters per second for VB, and this is in the y direction. We have our x component and our y component. Our x component is 2.04 meters per second, positive, so it's going to the right. Our y component is negative 1.6 meters per second, so going down. Our resultant VB is going down and to the right. So VB squared is going to equal 2.04 meters per second squared plus negative 1.6 meters per second squared. Squaring those, adding them, and taking the square root gives us for VB 2.59, keeps on going, meters per second. Looking for the angle, angle equals inverse tan of x, I'm sorry, y over x, so negative 1.6 meters per second over 2.04 meters per second, and this equals 38.1, keeps on going, degrees. So for my final velocity, vb is approximately with one sig fig, 3 meters per second at 40 degrees south of east. So nothing new when it comes to the trig, it's just new in the sense that we're adding the trig into momentum. The equations are the same, the main thing you need to do is break these apart into x and y and make sure that you're using the right velocities in the right coordinate, so either x or y. We'll do practice with this tomorrow, but this is about as hard as momentum will get.